This is Wrestling with Wrestling's Past and Present. I'm Tim Kurt. And I'm Roland Fulis. And today is episode four. We certainly hope you enjoyed the last couple weeks on Chris Jericho. We want to take this opportunity to thank you again for listening to our podcast each and every week. Yeah, it's nice to hear other people opinion on what they think of our show so we don't mind hearing feedback uh you know leave comments whether on facebook or on the podbean app either way let us know and uh, we'll see what we can do you know if you have any topics you want us to cover give us a give us a yell and we'll see if we can do something for you and we hope we deliver another good episode for you today today is all about tlc pay-per-view for the past part of the program we are going to talk about the very first tlc pay-per-view which took place in 2009 and then for the present obviously tlc comes out tomorrow and we will give you our predictions on uh the card we like to every time there's a pay-per-view coming up we kind of like to give you guys a little preview of our thoughts on it and see how close we are afterwards so hopefully you guys enjoy it we did it with survivor series uh last last month hopefully we can uh, do the same thing and maybe we'll get more than one or two right this time yes i was just about <laughs> to say that hope we do a little bit better than we did with survivor series but before we do that let's talk about tlc 2009 we both had the opportunity to watch this back this week yeah uh overall impressions i thought it was a really good solid show yeah it wasn't a bad show um there there was a few a few matches that we'll get into that were i mean not terrible but you know they had some some lulls in them but it, it wasn't uh I didn't find myself having the trouble I had with uh, the original Survivor Series. No. You know, struggling to watch some of those matches that went on for 37, 37 minutes and minutes, stuff. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. No, uh, no 37-minute matches this time. Uh, let's. Uh, by the way, that noise in the background is my cat, Toby, uh, <laughs> jumping into a box. Uh, let's start. Kind of an interesting dark match that took place. You had R-Truth defeating CM Punk. Uh, that's a little surprising. Our truth, uh, obviously now we know him as like the 200 time 24 seven champion. Yeah. He's been beaten by a woman and an ass car driver and <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, he's at least in the twenties, I think for, uh, title reigns. Yeah, last absolutely. Time I looked. And then CM Punk has been, went on to become one of the most talked about, uh, people in wrestling and even more so now today. Right. Uh, he was just recently back with, uh, with Fox sports. Um, not WWE, but back with Fox Sports to do the uh, backstage show on uh, on Fox. So you know maybe that'll lead to him wrestling eventually. Hopefully, hopefully that's my, that's my hope. But we'll see. I know there's a lot of people that are either hit or miss on CM Punk, and for me, even though everything happened the way that it happened, I, I'm still a big fan of CM Punk. Me too. I, I definitely hope that the opportunity does present itself for him to come back to the being in ring. And interestingly over. enough, in that dark match, you had. Our truth with Gold Dust, Gold Dust, Dustin Rhodes, you know, in AEW now, so he's still wrestling. Mm-hmm. And then you have Luke Gallows, one half of the OC, well, one third of the OC, with uh, Carl Anderson, AJ Styles. So, I mean, there's a lot of names even from 09 just in that one match that are still around. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, getting to the actual card or the, or the actual pay per view, the first match was a ladder match for the ECW Championship. It was back when they had three brands going on SmackDown, Raw, and ECW. You had Christian uh, defeating Shelton Benjamin. Um, I thought this match was pretty good. It was a little slow pace for me t- for a ladder match. It got sloppy at times, too. Uh, yeah. There was a part where Christian you know, had the ladder fall and hit him in the head. Yep. And they had to kind of stop the match for a minute, have him get checked on. You know, So it was slow on the outside of the ring. Um, it wasn't a terrible match. But I think be- being those two superstars, it probably could have been a little bit better. But it wasn't. It was a decent start for the pay per view, I think. Yeah. What, what? To your point about the match being stopped. <laughs> sorry about Toby, guys. Uh, but to your point about the match being stopped, I didn't understand why Sheldon Benjamin just didn't go up and take go up the ladder. That didn't make any sense. Yeah. To me. Well, he went up the ladder on the outside. <laughs> he went up the ladder on the yeah, outside. Yeah. 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 I mean, but yeah, there was a there was a spot where Christian was holding a ladder and he swept uh, our tr- uh, our truth. Shelton Benjamin swept his feet and he was uh, Christian was holding onto the ladder and when he went down he was supposed to hit himself in the head. Well, he actually really hit himself in the head and, bu- and busted himself open. So, yeah, it was weird when he was outside the ring. It was kind of funny that it but it was a couple minutes where the you know the trainer came checked on him and it, it made for an interesting. Uh, lull in the match, like you said, no, nobody there to knock the belt down, so he could have he could just went up there and he, he got could've it. Easily w- went up and got it. Uh, moving on to the next match, here's some names uh, that have uh, that you may know: Drew McIntyre defeating John Morrison. This match was for the Intercontinental Title. Um, I actually liked this match. I thought that was pretty good. Two solid workers. Uh, Drew McIntyre wins with a uh, 
almost like a dirty deeds uh, type DDT. Yeah, he was using the double arm underhook DDT at that time when he was the chosen one back by uh, by Vince McMahon back when he first came into the WWE. He, um, it's funny that both these guys are back now. Yes. Uh, Morrison just recently signed to come back, and McIntyre's been back for, what, about a year or so now? I would think so, yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see that both these guys have since left and come back. Um, I always liked the the work that Drew McIntyre did. I don't know why, um, you know, when he left, you know, he was in 3MB and all that stuff, and it just kind of went away, but, I mean, he's always been a really good talent. I don't know what happened there if... if if he got, you know, on the bad side of somebody and they just kind of wrote him off and turned to a, a laughing stock or what. But, I mean, he's, he's a great athlete, for, especially for a bigger guy. I think he's in the perfect gimmick right now, though, yeah. the, the Scottish Psychopaths gimmick. I think that's kind of fitting uh, fitting him to a T right now. So I think they definitely – it took him a while, but I think they definitely got it right with Drew McIntyre. Yep, I agree. All right, we have a uh, singles match for the women's title up next. We had Michelle McCool, or Mrs. Undertaker, uh, defeating Mickey James. Um, this match was just kind of there for me. Yeah. Uh, no disrespect to the performers, but this match didn't really do anything for me in and, any way, shape, or and form. And this was back when they had that, like, uh, Mickey being Piggy James, which was very, very distasteful to begin with in my yeah. mind. The, it was one of those uh, storylines that just felt like it was there but it, it it felt so real and so hateful you know from a from a storyline aspect it was just a very hateful and dark storyline that i didn't like personally i thought no. it was a little bit too far and then you, it definitely doesn't age well to today's no. today's society and uh layla came out with michelle mccool wearing a shirt that said piggy james on it and then they had the uh the intro to it showing how they they had uh michelle mccool do old mcdonald had a farm and, and yep. Piggy James and they oinked and you know she's cr- Mickey James is crying in the ring and I mean I get that it's it's an acting job I get that but it seemed it seemed a little uh, little hateful for a little me. distasteful yeah. yeah I definitely agree so for the next match you had Sheamus defeating John Cena yes you heard that right John Cena got defeated on a pay per view this was a tables match for the WWE title a uh, finish came where. Um, John was trying to suplex Sheamus through the table, but he kind of just fell off the ropes and went through the table, and there you go, Sheamus is your champion. To quote Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon didn't screw John Cena. John Cena screwed John Cena. <laughs> yes. He uh, he ended up you know falling off the, the top rope and through the table, so it wasn't like Sheamus put him through the table, and they even talked about that towards the end. The commentators were like, whoa, he, he wasn't really put through the table. But Sheamus might have pushed him, or you know they couldn't. They they, they played the, yeah they played the, oh he lost his balance gimmick, and uh, I guess it's a way to beat John Cena without beating John Cena. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> it is. It's a way to if you want to take the belt off of Cena, it's a good way to do it. It also um, sets up for a continuation of the feud. It obviously sets up for a rematch uh, between the two. Um, I thought it was a good match, though. I, I was entertained by it. Yeah, I agree. So the next match you had the Undertaker. Uh, defeating Batista. Batista, by the way, just recently announced as the new member of the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, this match, this was a little interesting. Originally, Batista won the match. Um, this was a chair match, by the way. He hit a low blow on the Undertaker, and then a chair shot to the head for the one, two, three. But apparently, in a chair match, low blows are illegal. Yeah. So you had <laughs> Teddy Long come out and you know, hold up, hold up, hold up, player. It's not going down like that. And uh, he restarted the match. And which and what was it, about a minute longer after that? Uh, I mean, if it, that, it, it, yeah, it, it more or less was a reversal without reversing it, and the Undertaker ends up walking out with the belt. Um, I thought it was funny in this match too that you see at the beginning or towards the beginning of the match, you see a lot more headshots. I mean, you saw the one at the end for for the Undertaker to lose, but it was funny going back and watching the amount of headshots they had in this match. Absolutely, when you, you know now how bad the headshots are you know i mean they weren't real vicious ones like you know the, the one that the rock laid on mick foley that oh yeah you know, I know. Handcuffed. they weren't like that but they were still like pretty pretty good chair shots i mean and, and it's amazing to think you know you fast forward 10 years and now it's pretty much if you do that you're oh you're done yeah exactly <laughs> you're done absolutely. so well and even AEW did a spot with, with cody when spears came out yep and they gimmicked the chair Yep. So, I mean, that, that's how he got cut. It was, the, it was a gimmick chair, and it folded over and cut him. So it wasn't even like he got hit with a steel chair. So to think just 10 years ago, people are bashing each other in the head with steel chairs, it's interesting to see, to look back on. 
Yeah, absolutely. That they've definitely come a long way in uh, in ten years' time. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Next match we have Randy Orton uh, getting a win over Kofi Kingston. Again, this was another match of two good workers, but to me, just wasn't enough there to excite me or to keep me fully invested in the match. I thought it was okay, but nothing, nothing spectacular. And you and I would think, um, knowing the caliber of talent in the ring, that it would be a little bit better than it was. Can you agree with me that the placement of this match felt weird? That it was the second to last match? Yeah. Yeah, it seemed like it should have been something that would have been after the women's match or maybe the beginning of the show. I was going to say, them, this, this seems like a solid opener to me. Yeah, and they went they went back-to-back championship match with the WWE and World Heavyweight title, and they went to Randy Orton and Kofi Kingston. Again, no offense to either one of those guys, but all that was was a grudge match. I like the storyline leading up to it with, with um, you know, Orton kind of picking on Kingston and Kingston snapping and, you know, destroying his, his car and all that stuff. That was solid. The match, eh, it was okay. Yeah. It wasn't nothing spectacular anyways, in my opinion. And then for your main event, uh, you had DX, which was Shawn Michaels and Triple H. They won the unified tag team titles over Jericho, Chris Jericho and the Big Show. I know how you love that name, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful <laughs> name that was. We Very talk, creative. We We're talk, just going to combine two guys' names and call it good. If you want more on that, check out our Chris Jericho episode. Part um, one. Part one. And, uh, and while you're at it, listen to part two. Well, yeah, you can't listen to one without the other. you got to listen to both. you got to listen to both. And then uh, if you haven't already, listen to our first episode about Survivor Series. Yeah, don't be a stupid idiot <laughs> and, and listen, please. Or you'll get It. It. All right, and it's podcasting. You don't need pants. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Again, check out Chris yeah, Jericho to exactly, get that reference. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought this match. Uh, I liked the match, although it, it sort of underdelivered a little bit for me. Um, I'm all, I'm the big DX fan though, so I think any match of theirs I'm going to like. Uh, but I thought I thought they could have done a little bit more with it. Yeah, um, you know, Shawn Michaels is my favorite all-time wrestler. I'm not going to even try to pretend like it's not that way. And, again, a big growing up in the DX era when I was, you know, in high school and it was a big thing. Um, it wasn't terrible, but um, it could have been more, I think. I mean, it's hard when you're facing the big show in any match to do a lot involving a ladder when the sure. guy weighs 500 pounds. There's only so much you can do. I mean, it's not like he's jumping off a ladder. I thought the finish was a little creative, though, where they tried to have Jericho get the belt on Big Show's shoulders. Yeah. And then, um, but then early in the match, Big Show destroyed a ladder in half, so you had Shawn Michaels climbing up a half a ladder with Triple H just holding on to the ladder. Yeah, Triple H was essentially the other part of the ladder, the, the yeah. making the V of the ladder. Um, and I, I like the look, the storytelling they did when Jericho was on the Big Show's shoulders, and he notices that DX is in the ring, but yeah. Jericho hasn't. And you see Big Show's eyes get so wide, and he's shaking his head no, like don't do anything. And, and Jericho's telling him to get closer to the belt, and Big Show just going, you know, shaking his head, going, "Oh, no, don't," you know. And then Jericho took a nasty bump off off a of Big Show's shoulders to the floor. Yeah, he kind of caught his foot on the rope and uh, fell on the table, kind of rolled up on the, the side, the metal frame of the table. It, it looked pretty pretty rough, rough landing for him, but uh, it was definitely a creative finish. Oh, absolutely, yeah, definitely a good finish. It definitely checked that finish out. That was that was, that was one of the better match. Better finishes on that show, for sure. Yeah, and I would say that, I mean, overall, as a pay-per-view, I mean, that was the last match. Um, and, and not including the first match, which was the dark match, that wasn't on the card. So I don't know how that match went. I mean, we you know who, who won because it's on paper. But um, I would say, you know, if I was going to grade that pay-per-view on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, somewhere in the six and a half, seven and a half range, somewhere in there, I think. It wasn't terrible, but there were some pretty good, like, I mean, I... I was a big fan of the Batista Undertaker match. I thought mm-hmm. that was a good match, and then the, the McIntyre Morrison match was a really good match too. Yeah, I kind of agree. I was thinking about seven, seven and a half. Yeah, um, I definitely agree with you. I thought my favorite match of the night was Undertaker Batista. Yeah, uh, for sure. And uh, you know, it was it's nice to see some of the names and some of the the faces on that that card. You know, get some respect finally because back back in that era, you know, they had guys that were often overlooked. You know, like Christian. And, you know, Sheamus was new coming in. They, that was when he won his first title. You know, he was relatively new in the business at the time. Yeah, he would just uh, called up Raw just a couple months earlier. Yeah, so yeah. that was, it was nice to see them kind of not go predictable. Um, and then I, I wasn't the biggest fan of the way The Undertaker but he's the match finished. I wish they could have done something yeah. a little bit better with that. But, I mean, overall, it was a pretty solid show, really. I thought so, yeah. Definitely, if you have time, definitely go out, check it out. Uh, definitely take a look at the main event. And the Undertaker Batista match as well. Yeah, if if I had to 
tell you one match to watch off of that card, I would probably either say the the Batista Undertaker or the uh, the DX Jericho. Show. I think if I had to pick one, one of those two, I, I don't know if I could pick just one because both of those two men, like I said, DX, one of my all-time favorite groups, so I don't know if I could pick just one, but I think, you know, one of those two matches you can't go wrong with. Absolutely, definitely. All right, so now we're going to transition into uh, TLC 2019. Full disclosure, we are recording this episode a little bit earlier than we normally do just for some uh, uh, personal arrangements that need to be made. Yeah, it's uh, the holiday season, so, you know, we have some traveling to do to see relatives and stuff, so we still wanted to give you guys a show, and uh, we decided, you know, usually we'll let you behind the, the curtain a little bit. Usually we record Saturday afternoon, sure. um, but we're doing this on Wednesday night, so oh, it's a little earlier than normal, so some of the pay-per-view card is still kind of up in the air. Um, so, I mean, we have a couple matches that we're pretty sure they're going to add mm-hmm. that we'll cover just to be safe, and if it doesn't happen, then, you sure. know, they're there, you know? Yeah. Well, let's start with the matches that are confirmed. Um, you know, we have Roman Reigns versus King Corbin in a TLC match. Um I like the storyline. I thought this was kind of a creative storyline that they've gone on um, uh, so far between the two. Uh, but I'm going to go with the big dog, Roman Reigns, uh, to take a victory over King Corbin here. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what exactly they're building towards in this storyline. It hasn't been a bad storyline, but I, I feel like it almost has to be a means to an end eventually. It's kind yeah. of gone on a little longer than I would like. You know, they had the the one one part there where they were doing the, uh, the dog food. They had him chained to the the ring post and they were smearing him with dog food and stuff so i mean i mean how much further can you really go they had him calling him a chihuahua and, and all yeah. this. so i feel like this is the uh the blow off from the whole thing so I, i'm also gonna pick roman plus i mean you know who Rome you know you know who roman is you're gonna have to do something spectacular to beat him maybe the blow off will be another kennel from hell match you remember that oh from, boy uh, from 1999 i believe it was Yikes. maybe yeah, that, would, <laughs> that would be an interesting match except you'd have to i think you'd have to have roman reigns as the big dog and you'd have to find somebody else corbin would have to get somebody maybe a junkyard dog <laughs> something or, like or something yeah. I mean, somebody that has dog in his name or you know just some road dog maybe road dog yeah well, yeah. I, I don't, yeah i don't know but yeah I think that um, this is probably the blow off to this feud. I, I hope because I mean it, it hasn't gone too long, but if they keep, it's it, on the verge. Yeah, it's going to get too long if, if they don't end it soon. I think. Next up, we have the New Day versus the Revival for the SmackDown ta- Team Title Match. Um, I'm a big fan of both of these teams. The Revival, I think, are one of the best tag teams in the business today. Uh, just technically uh, speaking, uh, New Day, one of the most entertaining. Uh, tag teams that you've had in recent memory. But they can also wrestle too, which is nice. Yeah. It's not like they're just all, you know, flash and entertainment. They can actually wrestle too. Absolutely. Whether it's it's Biggie or Woods or Kingston, any trio, any of the trio can all wrestle pretty well, so that helps too. I think uh, I think both of these teams are going to put on a solid match. I think it's going to be one of the better matches of the show. Uh, but I, I don't see a title change happening here. I'm going to go with the New Day to win. Yeah, I don't think, they, I mean, they just put the title on them. So I, I don't, I mean, unless they're trying to give them the most tag team, I've heard that too. I don't know if you've heard that, but I've heard that um, that was some of the talk that they were going to try to give them the most title reigns ever. Oh, over, really? Over this, I, uh, so I don't know if they're going to keep making them lose, keep putting them back on. Back what are they, seven-time champions now? Seven-time now. So, I mean, I hope they don't keep flip-flopping. I'd like no. to see a little bit, you know. So I, I'm going to agree with you. Um, yeah, I like the Revival as well. I think that... Um, you know, if you're going to go for, like, that old-school feel of a tag team, you know, the Revival. I mean, if, if you are a fan of some of the older tag teams, like, you know, some of the, like, the Horsemen or, like, the Brain Busters as they were in the WWF at the time, mm-hmm. you know, Tully and Arn, you know, stuff like that. They are very technical. They're not flashy by any means. No. But, um, yeah, I think New Day has to end up winning this match. Next up, you have The Miz versus Bray Wyatt, not The Fiend. It's going to be Bray Wyatt this time. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. I'm, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know how this is going to go. I, I kind of see The Miz winning by like a disqualification or a count out, something like that. I don't see a clean finish here. Mind you, this is also not a title match. No. This is just a regular. Originally, some people thought it might have been for the title because apparently The Fiend and Bray Wyatt have different titles. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't so, know. Um, you know, they have him playing, you know, a good guy, essentially a, a face as Bray Wyatt, a sort of face. Sure. And you have, you know, Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt as the face and then the Fiend as, like, the dirty, you know, heel character. I don't know what inclusion of Daniel Bryan will be in this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think he has to show up at some point. I would think. Sure. Um, so, you know, maybe Wyatt wins by disqualification because yeah. Daniel Bryan comes out and attacks 
Bray Wyatt, but I, I think The Miz is going to win this match, too. I don't think it's going to be clean, though. I think that, there's going to be something. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm going with, too. Um, we have Aleister Black taking on Buddy Murphy. I think this is going to be a sleeper match here. I think this could be a really good match that could uh, be one of the better shows of the night. Um, I think they're trying to build both guys here. Um, but I, I think they're going to put Aleister Black over in this match. Yeah, um, can we both agree that, that Buddy Murphy kind of looks like uh, Glenn Jacobs when he had hair? Yes. Can we agree with that? Okay, yeah. good. A little shrunken down version of him. I, I think Yankee may be more, <laughs> yeah, there you go, more yeah. pronounced. <laughs> yeah, any of you um, newer fans that don't know, you know, the character Kane that he played before he was Kane, well, before he was the fake Diesel, too. Yep. Uh, Isaac Kane from DDS, he was uh, Jerry Lawler's personal dentist. <laughs> Every time I see Buddy Murphy, that's what I think of. Every <laughs> single time. Um, but I agree that the... I don't see the point in beating Aleister Black here. No. I don't. I mean, I hate to keep picking the same as you, but I, I don't see them... I mean, I guess they could, but I don't. I don't get the point of it. Sure. Why, why would you end up beating him after you build him up so high? And and it's not like he's facing John Cena. He's facing Buddy Murphy. And no offense to Buddy Murphy, but I don't think there's any point in having Aleister Black lose to Buddy Murphy. Next up, you have a uh, women's tag team title match: the Kabuki Warriors versus Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. I think this is going to be a good match here. Um, I actually, to, because they're playing up the storyline of Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch not getting along, usually when that happens and their tag team, uh, people that don't get along usually win the tag team belt. Mind you, this match is a TLC match yes. for the titles as well. It's a TLC match. Um, so, I mean, that literally opens a door for anything, any Take possibility off. to happen, mm -hmm. um, not to cut you off, but... Uh, I, I totally agree with that logic too. So it's it's hard. I'm gonna just to be different. I'm gonna say that the Kabuki Warriors will end up winning it. But I agree that you know that that's a good thought. I, I in my head had thought the Kabuki Warriors were gonna win because why would you want Becky to have two titles? Sure. But I mean, you, a lot of times you see you know I mean Triple H and Stone Cold were tag team champions. Yeah. So I I, I agree with that too. But I'm gonna call uh, Oscar and Kari Sane's number here. All right, I think that's our first disagreement of the day so far. We gotta have a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, we got to. One of us—that means at least one of us will have one prediction, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who knows? It probably ended in a no contest. <laughs> <laughs> the NXT girls will show up and just beat them all up, and we're like, "What the heck just happened?" But yeah. Next up, we have um, Rusev versus Bobby Lashley with Lana in a tables match. This has kind of been a controversial uh, storyline that they've been doing. Please, please let this be it. <laughs> yeah, I like know. seriously, play. Well, they're divorced now, so how much more can you go? <laughs> uh, and if you can't see, you can't see us, obviously. But in my head, I'm saying divorce. I'm doing the air quotes. <laughs> yes, because I mean they're not. They're not. Divorced. Um, and it's storyline. I get it. And they pretty much shifted the, um, the Mike Bennett Maria Kanellis storyline to Rusev and Lana and Bobby Lashley, essentially. Um, they had the whole pregnant angle for a little while with Lana for a week or whatever. Sure. And it seems like they wanted that storyline with somebody. They had that promiscuous thing where, where who was the father of Maria's baby. And mm. it just, it, you know, it seems like, and this storyline's just there and it's, it's bad. Like no offense to Lana, but you are a horrible actress. You are so <laughs> bad. Um, I'm not trying to bury anybody, but it's brutal to watch sometimes when she's talking by herself when she had when i mean it's pretty bad when you have bobby lashley who's not a great talker no fixing lana's talking <laughs> so um yeah just please let this be i don't care who wins i mean i'll pick somebody i don't really care but please let this be it because this storyline has just been shoved down everybody's throat and it's so bad the acting in this is horrible i know it is it is, it is pretty bad I mean, you have people that work for the company talking about how they want it to end yeah they just want it's bad i mean the 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 uh behind the scenes show they have on on Fox, the one that CM Punk is in, that uh, they they kind of go behind the wall and talk about that, and they even they agree that this is rubbish, it's yeah. trash, it's horrible. It's a little uncomfortable too. Yeah, at some it, point. yeah. I mean, how, how does you know Bobby Lashley's wife feel about know. you know Bobby going to work and making out with Lana, and then how does Rusev feel about you know? Because I mean, they're not just pecking each other on the on the, on <laughs> no. the cheek either. They're they're going to it's town. Tonsil hockey. Yeah, it's and um, Jerry Lawler. It, it's yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> It's an interesting storyline that I think needs to end. So please, if anybody, if anybody any, with any power listens to this, which they probably won't, obviously, but if they did, just <laughs> please let this end. Um, speaking of that, though, I, 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 I'm going to go with Lashley win here. I think Lana's going to get involved, maybe to do a distraction or Rusev, something like that. I can see that happening with the finish. I, uh, I think Rusev's going to win this match. Mm -hmm. I think that he's going to finally get the revenge now that they're divorced. Sure. I'm hoping that this is a way to maybe write Lana off TV for a while. Like maybe this this finishes the angle and 
they, they just goes away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna pick Rusev, so I'll be different on this one too. But I, I think Rusev finally gets his. I mean, they've they've been playing the uh, the uh, restraining order card on him long enough, and I think finally Rusev's gonna get get his get his uh, his shot at Bobby Lashley. Hopefully, he ends up winning, and like I said, hopefully the storyline just goes away. So those are the matches that we um, have conf- that are confirmed uh, for the pay per view. Well, it is confirmed that the Viking Raiders will be defending their titles. Yes. That's confirmed. We yes. don't know exactly. We just don't know who. who. Yet. We don't know against who. Um, then what are some of the other matches that uh, um, are? Rumored? There's a couple that I want to throw out there that I have heard and I've read that are going to be made. I mean, SmackDown being a couple days from now are probably in their in their SmackDown matches. Yeah. Um, one would be for the SmackDown Women's Championship with. Um, Bailey facing Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans recently turned face for some reason. I don't know. That, that was kind of pointless too. But I mean, um, if that match comes true, I don't see Bailey losing. I don't either. I think Bailey will. Um, I think Bailey will win that one. So we'll we'll go with that one. And then the other match that I'm I'm fairly certain is going to end up happening. They played out on Raw um, when the the match ended and Orton came out and and got involved. The um, Rey Mysterio as the U.S. champion going against AJ Styles and Randy Orton in a triple threat match. I'm hoping this is a ladder match. That'd be awesome. I'm hoping that's how they do this. Um, and Yeah, because there's not, as of right now, there's not a single ladder match no. on the show. There's Just no a straight-up chair- ladder match. There's no chair match either. No chair but match. still, I mean, uh, it doesn't have to be. But I'm hoping they make this a ladder match um, so it can be a really good match. Uh, if they end up making this a match, I think Rey Mysterio retains. I don't think they're going to change the title yet. They're not going to. I feel like the same thing. I feel like with the New Day, they just put it on him. Why take it off him? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think um, they'll take it off of him. If they do, I could see Orton potentially winning that match though, um, just because he's kind of been sneaking around lately in the storyline. But I I have to agree with you and go with Rey Mysterio in that match. All right, and then um, the other we know the Viking Raiders are facing somebody. Rumor has it it's going to be the OC, the the best tag team in the world, versus from the yeah versus the Raw tag team champions. Um, I again, I don't. Nobody really has beaten the Viking Raiders yet. Nope. And I guess if you're going to set them up to be beat by somebody, I guess technically the the best tag team in the world would be the team to do it. But again, I don't really see the point in it. Um, I don't see it happening. I would I would think the Viking Raiders would win that. Match yeah, I mean. Well. I, I think, and this is a spoiler that I'm going to say now, and I'm going to, you know, this is December 11th. We're not anywhere near WrestleMania yet, but I think if the Viking Raiders lose, it'll be at WrestleMania. Somebody will have their moment. I think they'll carry the titles all the way to there. That's my guess. Could be totally wrong. They could lose to whoever they face, but I hope that's what they do with it. Let them have a nice long run with it. I mean, they build them up as, you know, two two badasses. Sure. Maybe it'll be AOP. You know, maybe, maybe that's where they go with it. You could. But, I mean, you know, that's not this coming pay-per-view but you know that's what i see it so no matter who whether it's the oc or whether it's somebody else i feel like the viking raiders no matter who they face are gonna walk out with the belts absolutely yeah i I definitely agree with you there so i think that's gonna wrap up our discussion about tlc again uh we do apologize that we had to record this a little bit earlier than normal but we still wanted to give you a uh show out this week and on time so um we did the best that we could and full disclosure blame tim i'm gonna be here <laughs> yes it's all, it <laughs> I'll, is all, I'll throw him under the bus it's fine it is all my fault <laughs> and coming up next week for you guys we are going to have a discussion about the character bray wyatt we're going to cover everything from his husky hair stays up until the fiend and the firefly funhouse and everything in between and everything in between so i'm looking forward to that i think that's going to be a great episode for us yeah i figure um you know we talked about it before we went on air here and started recording that you know i think he's probably the most current talked about you know wrestler right now you know that's in the wwe and i mean our show isn't just wwe based obviously but I think he's his character, the Fiend, is probably the most popular, you know, going character right now. Sure. Over, I guess, character. So why not talk about, you know, and especially where this pay per view TLC, they're actually having Bray Wyatt face the Miz. Mm-hmm. They're adding another wrinkle to that character. To the character now. I think it's a good idea to, you know, at least get our feet wet on, on the Bray Wyatt episode. And, you know, who knows? Maybe in a year from now, we'll have more to cover on, you know, wherever he goes with it. Or, you know, maybe this is it. Who knows? Who knows what we'll have? But I think as far as topic goes, you couldn't pick. Uh, a better topic to talk about absolutely so that's what's on the way for next week uh until then again thank you for listening to the show uh tune in next week for a discussion on bray wyatt and until then this has been wrestling with wrestling's past and present (laughs) 